welcome to another edition of I Only Listen to 90s Music. We are back. We are back. We have a special, ultra special guest with us in the building. If anybody, all I St. Louis people know and my people in New York know, if the St. Louis people know, your first time, Stacey, the first time I do grind it on you, he was DJing nines out of 10. <laughs> it's possible. It is quite possible. <laughs> quite possible that that's what happened. And, that, and, and when I went, to New, I went moved to New York for graduate school, and he don't even know I've been in some spots where he was DJing. I was like, yo, I know, dude. He from the crib. They like, you don't know. And I was like, no. And, and, <laughs> and oh, then God. before we even start this interview, I have a bet with one of my homeboys from college. Were you in the My Projects video? Yeah. I told him that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm in there. That is funny. like, dude, that ain't dude. Ain't that. I was like, that. I was like, dude, that's DJ Cuddy from St. Louis. Like, no, he ain't. He he a DJ from Chicago. You don't know uh, him. Uh, DJ Cut from St. Louis. I was in it. Um, Chaos. It was me and Chaos was in it uh, rapping St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. Because of course, with them being in the Midwest, we played it in St. Louis. Yeah, but yeah, it was in the video. Yeah, the man, you, you did Saints, the Palace, Facade, I'm assuming back then. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God, boy, you taking me down memory lane. Uh, what, Rio? <laughs> Not, Rio. I, damn, Fletcher on the Rio. Boy, yeah. <laughs> you a damn historian. He is. For, oh, my God, I just was telling somebody this other day about his memory. Like, all of us have big memories about the 80s and 90s, right? But... Like, so our other um, host, Scott, who'll be here in a little bit, Scott, like, I might say, like, oh, man, it was this song that I really loved by this group. And Scott would be like, yeah, like, I had that album or the album cover looked like this. Daryl would be like, yeah, because you know who produced that? It was so-and-so's sister. Now, what had really happened was he wasn't even supposed to be on the thing. He was like, Kyle, I just was talking about the song. You done went way back. But that's his, that's his knowledge. He just has that, that memory and retains that information. Your memory is crazy. As soon as you said the Rio, I thought about uh, when Ja Rule came. This was before I went to New York. And somehow, somewhere, we was at the Rio. We was at the Rio. I'm trying to think if Ashanti was there, too. But that's when Foolish first came out. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah. Damn, boy. <laughs> out of all the stories I'm told, I never, ever, ever brought up the Rio. I think, yo, that's crazy. <laughs> That is crazy. Yeah, you got a good memory. Your memory is crazy. <laughs> How are you gonna be in a club in New York and I come say, "Yo, hey man." I, I couldn't get up there. Man. I was. It was. We was at uh. What was it? Was a spot in the Bronx. You would DJ that, and then it was a spot of uptown too. Um, it's a restaurant now. Okay. Off of uh, 145th and um, it's the block over yeah. from Linux. It's a restaurant that's on the corner, and they got like outdoor seating right there. And it was it was like it was a restaurant bar thing, and they, they made it a club at night. Now it's fully. I was restaurant. up top. I was yep. up top. That's why. Okay. Yeah, and I couldn't get. I was like, man, I know duty for the crib, and security was like, oh, I mean, you know, you got a St. Louis. Oh no, him. And I had a St. Louis hat on too. Like, don't you see the hat? Like, I'm <laughs> yo, listen, Stacy, he bringing up stuff that I forgot. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. That is, oh, that's God. how his mind works. It's amazing. This is, like, you before we get into you, cut, we it got is. two topics we got to talk about that we have, uh, which one you want to tackle first? You want to go into the black and white R&B cover photos? I, I need to, we got to talk about that because it's something I've never thought about. And it's like, Wait, what album covers are black and white? So it just really made me think about it. Like, what? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Like, I gotta look up. Like, so cut with the whole question is: Do a color out album covers look better than black and white? Covers? Right, and this all started from. So, I graduated last Tuesday from the University Not of Arizona. Stacey. Thank you very much. And there's a picture that my best friend and I took and we're just kind of standing there and like the camera's like looking up at us and we're kind of looking down at it or whatever. So it looked like we about to drop a mixtape. That was the whole point. <laughs> and so I posted it and then someone um, reposted it being in black and white. And I'm like, you like black and white better? He's like, no, you know, um, album covers are better when they're black and white. 
And I was like, huh, is it true? So I was like, yeah, the, if, the, if the cover is going to be black and white, then the album is going to be amazing, apparently. So, and I, I wrote it to D, I was like, we need to talk about this because I don't know if that's true. I would have to say I agree with you because the I can't even think of a I'm literally trying to remember a R&B album in the 90s with a black and white cover like I'm mentally trying to see only thing I see is reasonable doubt and that's hip hop that's the only mm. 90s or yeah. I mean 90s album cover that I can remember that was black and white I just see reasonable doubt I'm pretty yeah, sure. Hip hop is fine. Well, you know what? Hold on. Um, the roots. No, my life is apart, loose. But does that count? Does things fall? Things fall apart from the roots count? Damn. Things fall apart. Yeah, that was. That was black and white. That was black and white. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, because my life, my life is blue. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah my life is blue. So. Um, like I said, that. Oh no, no. The second Mary, that third Mary album is black and white. Uh, Share my world is all black and white, right? Share my world, right? Yep. It is. It's a sepia, but yeah, I'll allow it. <laughs> oh, sepia. Hold, hold, hold that thought. I'm being petty right now. <laughs> yeah, uh oh, here we go. And then. <laughs> I'm your baby. Uh, that has some black and white covers too. I don't know which is for some singles. I'm your know. baby tonight. Whitney Houston is black and white. Oh, okay. Uh oh, he finna, he finna, he finna, he finna, he finna stun on us real quick. Uh, uh, you know. Oh. Oh, see, he's stunning on us. <laughs> it is black and white. Yeah, it is. <laughs> see, that's, there you go. So there's, there's another. And what else is on here? The roots. Yep. Things fall apart. And, yeah, common. So the, basically, that whole uh, plaque almost is black and white albums. Yeah. Because I'm sitting there like, why am I mentally trying to remember? Just look on my wall. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what else. Uh, the Dynasty is black and white. Is right. It? What else is black? Yeah, it is. Dynasty is black and white. Yeah, I just need to look on the wall and see what's all up here. It's <laughs> black and white. Dynasty is black and white. Yep, reasonable doubt. And Ludacris, back for the first time. That's black and white. Oh, it is. Yeah. Uh, Rhythm Nation. That's 80s. Yep, we'll allow it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, was, it was right there. It was right there. We'll allow it. Um, the Predator, Ice Cube. Uh, what's the 411 is in black and white? Mm, no, it was not. No, that's not black and white. That has some color on that. That has some color. That wasn't black and white. That has some color. Yeah. Look it up. You don't want to bet I'm, me. I'm it. He said, you don't uh, want to bet me. I'm looking at it. it. <laughs> so, all right. So, well, all right. So what I'm looking at from when I Google what's the 411, that's black and white. Now, the remix album, is color. What's the 411 is not black and white. It's okay. not full color, but it's definitely not black and white. It's kind of like a brownish type of tint. That's is it not... sepia? That's what we are. I think it's, is that, it, it's back to share my world. <laughs> back to sepia. Yeah, not share my world. That's, that's not that's. Yeah, which one? No, I think this was married. No, this ain't share my world. Share my world is a different. Color. That's a different, yeah. Share my world is different. That's her. Um, is black and white. Yeah, that's yeah, that's further down the line. Um, if we go in early 2000s, we can throw in Ludacris. So back for the first time is black and white, but Ludacris, his name is in red. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um is this Johnny Gill? Johnny Gill might be Scarface the Diary is black and white. Hair and red. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, I'm literally, I'm just looking around the wall. Like, <laughs> Keep looking. Look, don't let us stop you. Look, 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 yeah, look. We <laughs> look, if you if you looking dead at it, yeah. don't let my Google search uh stop yeah. you. Like, you, that, like, you got the you real got the facts. facts. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm looking at the so wall. the next one, Stacey, is uh, uh cut, you don't have to answer in this one. This one we get a little messy. 
uh, a little bit in this one because we we judge all the '90s R&B groups. Um, so we fit. <laughs> I don't know if you saw this cut where they have a reality show coming out with uh, uh, with all '90s R&B group girls all in one house. So it's a Navia, Pam Long of Total, Irish and Lamisha of, uh, of 702, Shamia DeVoe from Black, uh, Aubrey O'Day from Danny Kane, Keely Williams of 3LW, and Felicia and Fallon of Cherish. And the one girl from Destiny's Child is on here too, I thought, too, Farrah Franklin. Yeah, I figured. She ain't doing too much. Wow. Now, Stacey, you had some definitely comments about this. I said why was my, um, that was really the overarching question of why is this happening? Um, we didn't ask for this, nor do we deserve it because um, <laughs> this is why, like why it's the, it's, a, it's like the group of girlfriends past. Why did this, it's like all your exes came together and decided to form a super group. Why? Why did we need this? And it's like, ain't nobody making no money or something. Or like, like I said, I, I saw, I saw Pam like two years ago at a Christian conference around the corner, at like the Sheridan by the Galleria over here in Dallas. <laughs> and it was a very small conference. Um, a coworker flew down here and invited me to it. And then like they, they talk and doing all this stuff. And then uh, they're like, oh, we have a special guest here. We have Pam um, from the R&B group uh, Total. It's like and Pam just was sitting there in the back and just got up there and she started telling her testimony and everything. And now I guess she wants to sing again versus like, so when I just saw her, it was like, I ain't singing no more because of this. So was this I don't, before like, the Bad Boy Tour or, or at, was this This after? was after. Was so this was like, this was, this was definitely, D'Angelo was here like this definitely two years ago. Oh, so the bad boy was like three or four years ago. Yeah, so yeah, it was just two years. It was, if it wasn't 2018, it was 2019. But I'm almost positive it was like 2018 that that happened. And um, so like I said, I just saw her and she was, wasn't going to sing no more. And now she going to sing again. So what can you do? Um, I just, I don't know why. Cut, are you going to watch this show, Cut? No, I don't watch none of this stuff, man. I, I, I don't, I don't. Teach his own, you know what I'm saying? Because I used to bash the hell out them shows. But what's not for me is just not for me. You know what I'm saying? Some people love it and they're going to watch it. And it is what it is. But nah, I, I just can't. Because you got to realize, especially being in New York all almost 10 years, and to see all of the artists from back in the day, from rappers, singers, actors, producers, and you just think these people are so rich, but that's not the case. So they got to do whatever they need to do to eat. So, you know, it kind of is what it is, you know. Because, you know, everybody didn't get rich. Everybody didn't have their paperwork in order. You got to realize, I use... um. One person I use as an example all the time is web star chicken noodle soup mm. i never forget it. i never forget it um we had a conversation because he asked my advice i'm pretty sure he asked a few people's advice should he take a record deal i personally said no because that's when itunes was just getting hot so if he were to put it exclusively on itunes itunes was selling for like 99 cents he would have made 75 cents per single but I can't count that man pocket when a record label is saying, I don't know what his advance was. So we just going to say if a label is coming at you saying we're going to give you $200,000 in advance. Not saying that was the number versus, you know, waiting the loan route, still owning the rights to your song and all that for the loan, you know, right? You know, it is what it is. So you, you can't always count somebody's pockets they these people they need the money they they want stars of the group you know total got jerked period <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> they totally got joke jerked <laughs> yeah and 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 the, and the person that everybody came to see don't want to perform with them so that's a, that's a problem too 
you know. <laughs> when, the, when the person everybody wants to come to see want to be a housewife and chilling, <laughs> you kind of asked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah man. Should, this... If y'all ever get a chance, Google Total without Keisha on YouTube and see the shows that difference when Keisha came back when they performed on the Bad Boy Tour. Two different shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, they got to eat. They got to eat, know, though, man? right? They eat, so they're going to do what they got to do, you know? Yeah. So, cut. let's get into you, man. Like, let's start from the beginning. Where, what part of St. Louis are you from, man? Ooh, that is a hard question because, you know, I always tell my story, like, growing up in St. Louis, we moved, like, man, like, every damn year. So, but what high school did you go to? Because okay. that's what's going to really uh, break it down for us to know something about you. No, it's not going to break it down <laughs> all the time anyway. But I went to Roosevelt. I can give you, listen, I'm going to take you through elementary school, uh, field school, which was on Olive and Taylor. Um, I went to Hamilton School in the fifth grade, big Hamilton at the time. Sixth grade was Yateman on the north side. Mm -hmm. That's by my that's by my house. <laughs> Seventh grade was Stevens Middle School on Finney. Eighth grade was normally junior high, because at that point we stayed in Northwoods. Freshman through junior year was Roosevelt, but during those years we moved like three times. And then senior year was McKinley when we uh, lived in the Peabody Projects. So I lived all over the damn city. Lived all over St. Louis. So is that, did you put that to a testament of you understanding and knowing how the city rocks and how musically it is for you being in so many different places as well? It wasn't fun at the time. It ain't like, you know what I'm saying, you just wanted to move. You know what I'm saying? You know how it goes. Shit, we had to move. Do we curse on here or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Go fine. for it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Wait, so it wait, I don't like, have my letters on, so I can cuss. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it ain't like... You know, you just wanted to move all damn time. Bills don't get paid. You always got to move. Just so you a kid, what you going to do? You got to go with the flow. But uh, yeah, so, but yeah, in it, um, it's the gift and the curse because you, a person like myself, I have some friends that I've had for years, but I can't say, hey, this is my childhood friend. We grew up from first grade together. Shit, I get to know you, mm -hmm. then next thing you know, we move. You know what I'm saying? So develop friends later on in life, like, you know, once I got to the Peabody. And you know, don't get me wrong, no different people all across right. the um, city, but it was easy to detach. It, I, I can detach from a person like, like that because I'm so used to moving mm -hmm. to another surrounding. So my detachability is like, crazy you'd be like damn i thought we was well shit i'm we about to move so yeah don't get me wrong i still will go yeah. back and visit the different neighborhoods that i you know stayed in at the time but it's a little different like when you get later in life look down the line like okay why am i what makes me tick why am i am the way okay damn i moved all the time so it's kind of easy to detach from people because you're off you're off somewhere else yeah so what got you into music DJing? Like, what was it like, man, this moment, like, yo, I want to be a DJ. Yep. So to add to that story, whatever you was going through as a child, music was always my escape. But going back, you know, like to this day, my mother tells the story of how they used to play with me, um, for 45s, you know what I'm saying? For those who don't know nothing about the history, that was 45s. So we used to have wax, but they would have me, they would call out a song for me to go get, and I would go get the 45s. And she said they would just crack up laughing because I would like study the records and mm -hmm. know what to go get. So some people, they did it as a hobby. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this DJ thing. DJing was never a hobby for me. This is what I do. My, and even though my father owned a record store, it really didn't have nothing to do with that. It really didn't. What record store did your dad own? It was called Henry's Black Connection. It was on Delmar in between Whittier and Sarah. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Yeah, okay. so we need to fix TVs there and, you know, component sets, our electronics, and we sell records out there as well. Yep. But, you know, I, I guess you could say, you know, music was in him as well because he wasn't on no damn record store. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so some of the hobby was it's never a hobby to me. Like, my love for music was always there. And music, again, was my escape. You know, I would just listen and just zone out, listen to music. So what what was the first album you bought with your own money? Listen, <laughs> that is that's a uh, man, man. Listen, I've been buying records as far back as five, mm. five years old. Yeah, that wasn't no wait till you get a teenager start buying records. I, I I remember this like it was yesterday. My aunt. Betty and her friend Darlene was getting me ready. It was on my birthday. I, I'm like, my memory is like, your memory is like, you know, incredible yeah. too, but I got a photographic memory. Like, I can see it like it was yesterday. They was getting me ready, standing me on the, you know, on the toilet, and they were trying to tell me which 45 to get. And I remember. And so I'm like five years old, I was like, I want Curtis Mayfield. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I would buy 45s before buying albums. You no, know, that was always my thing. One never really tripping off, you know, clothes and fresh haircuts and all that, whatever little money I could scrounge. Yep, I would try to buy records. Mm. So when's the first time you actually DJ for people where you like, all right, and then you realize, oh, people want to hear me actually spin. Man, I would say probably like before having two turntables and the mixer. I don't know how old y'all are, but I'm 50. Yeah. We, so, we, 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 we were just a little bit younger than you while you were spinning. So, right. Like, <laughs> I, I told y'all from New York in graduate school when you were doing this. This was me at Saints while right. you was on the thing. Right. So, we was there. <laughs> but, but, but I'm saying way before that, like, you know what I'm saying? family get-togethers and you know it's just one record player you know I always try to be the one that's playing the music for whatever you know gathering it was and then when I start you know getting my equipment together like in about 1985 and uh one of my first parties I DJ was I want to say like you know by then we live in the project so you know like 12th and Park that was one of many early um, parties at McKinley High School. And what we used to do in the projects, like vacant apartments, like in a high rise, you know, the electric still will be on, you know what I'm saying? So somebody would, hey, let's do a party in such and such building on such and such floor. So yeah, it all started there. Yeah, so. Hey, so how did you get on as Saints in the Palace? <laughs> so what's crazy about that, you know, going through the path of radio and records and all that type of stuff, you know, I went to Flow Valley, uh, started, you know, because they had a 100-watt radio station, 89.5. So I started a rap show on the air called Rhyme Time in 1990. And I developed a relationship with G. Wiz, who used to be G Wiz, so he was on 88.1. Of course, he had Wizard Time Records, put out Culture mm -hmm. Shock, you know, Early D, D Rebel and all that. So me and him developed a relationship late 80s. Of course, you know, all, all the way through. I actually met him in 82, but that's a whole nother story. Just taking you through that period. Me and Wiz developed a relationship. He was in with Saints, you know, DJing some of the skating sessions. And he hit me, like, you know, asked me, do I want a DJ? That Drex was looking for a DJ. It came through the connection with G-Wiz connecting me to Drexel in 92, I believe. I was making, like, $60 a session. <laughs> 60. 60 bucks. <laughs> $60. What, what? Yeah. No, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nah, and then the raise, I think, went up to about, 75 now you know they was caking off off me you know i'm killing it in the party room killing it killing it and getting paid 75 dollars. but you know it paid off in the long run it's still paying out to this day because those are people that grew with me and followed me as i started doing my own events so you know 
long time money. Stacey, you want to jump in? I was going to ask. Um, so essentially, music has been your entire life, and DJing has been your life. And it's not a hobby; it's what you love. It's your passion. Yep. And there's people always say, like, you know, you want to make sure that you get up every morning and you're doing something that you love. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a time during your career where it wasn't fun anymore, where it really, where it really felt like work and it wasn't fun? Um, I would say definitely my last few years at 95.5, it stopped being fun because people like myself, you know, I can't say all DJs, you know, I, I, I respect and salute people that do this because it's in them, not just, I'm going to just make a come up. I'm going to be a DJ. Like everybody's a damn DJ now. So <laughs> like, you motherfuckers want to never DJ, but okay, you got a hard drive, now you're a DJ. Um, creative people like myself hate to be stifled. You know what I'm saying? For its creativity. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, don't place this and don't do that. Yo, just leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. Let me do what I do. So when people try to take your creativity away, it takes the fun out of it. It feels like a job. And when it starts to feel like a job, you lose your love for doing it with those people, not the actual whole business. Let's not get that okay. twist. I still DJ parties and concerts or whatever, you know, things starting to open back up. So I'll be, you know, back doing what I do. But yeah, when you work at a place that tries to stifle what you do, then that stopped being fun. Is there, do you have a favorite event or anything that you've done over the past, several, uh, I don't want to say several, but over the past <laughs> couple of decades? Like you said, like, cause you, you've been in this, so you ain't just start last week. So like, right. wow. Oh my God. Where do you even start? It's just so many memories. Uh, it is, it's, it's, God, where do you even start? I swear to God, uh, you know, my first tour going on tour with Cedric the Entertainer and, you know, you're hitting all these different cities and different stages. So I'm trying to even remember what was my favorite city. That's, that's a hard question. What was my absolute favorite city? But I would say the experience of being on stages in different cities and just, you know, doing what I do. A dude from St. Louis, you know, rolling with other people from St. Louis, going to different cities, just shutting, shutting it down. It's hard to pick one. It's like, yeah, I should have been prepared for this too. But, <laughs> yeah, hey, it, guess what? It, I just made that question up like three seconds ago. I, I saw her writing yeah. stuff down. I, I, that's, that's you, yeah. you, you see when I, saw, like, when I start writing something down, it's because like I'm thinking about it. I'm like, hold on, let me, before I forget. I, that, means I, that means I need to throw the ball. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Throw the pass. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a lot of different moments to where I was like, damn, this, this is, uh, this is crazy. Even, even as, as, um, as recent as when the No Limit Tour came through St. Louis, like all these years, and you read the write up in the paper when they saying I was the best part of the show. <laughs> yeah, like, shout out to Matt, uh, my my my, uh, my podcast uh, uh, co owner uh, Matt, uh, who said that the tank came through and rolled over all your money. <laughs> it came in town and rolled over all your money. Yeah, so it's like you know, being able to. Uh, for the most part, save shows, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, a lot, everybody think they can do what you do until it's time to do what you do, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's more than just DJing the show and just playing music. No, you have to entertain crowds and keep them distracted because at different concerts, it's always some madness going on, you know, on the production always end. There's something always. Yeah. Here. And there's nothing worse really than a bad DJ. Hard. Yeah, nothing. exactly. Nothing Everybody, worse. man, I, I, I can DJ a show. They give all the shows a cut. No, it give the shows to me because I put people in seats and I'm going to hold it down. Lovely. 
Yeah, so, it, so it's more than people start leaving real early if it, if it ain't right. I mean, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and go home. Man. Listen, you go to a Lauren Hill concert, the DJ <laughs> needs to get paid extra because you don't know when she gonna show up. He's so show? I went to it. I knew I checked with you know, because it was at the shape, so I was checking with people that worked there uh to see what time is she supposed to get there, and I still got there two hours later in start time and still waited another two hours for her to even touch the stage. Ain't no, fool me once, shame on you. Like yeah. I went to the first, when she came to the pageant, it was like 2010. That's, that's the one good. that everybody, that was, that was the one, that was the one that was like, like y'all just started like 12 midnight or something. Yeah, that was the one that started really late. So, but that's when I think we first started finding out that she didn't come, she wasn't coming to shows on time. So I went to that one and we'd been sitting there all night, just like, when is she coming out? And then she came out, did everything from the album to a different melody. And we were like, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. And that's when you, and then eventually you find out why she couldn't use the, original music and Robert Glass and then all of that. So now <laughs> when the fact that people are still going to her shows after she has repeatedly decided she gonna show up when the hell she wants to, you're not gonna get my money again, ma'am. I'm not doing this with you. I gotta go to work tomorrow. I'm not anybody finna sit here all night and wait on Lauren Hill. But again, if you're the DJ, you gotta put it like you have it's your show. Pretty much you it's you're getting paid because it is your show. It is no you are no longer the you're not open and you're the headliner mm -hmm. at this point pretty much pretty much yeah she's just good. gonna close it out for you that's it because you got to be able to do it so to be at a lauren hill show she five hours late and the dj is whack i'm burning something up i will knock all this shit over yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that's, knock over that's, everything that's that's that's, that's whoo i'm glad yeah i mean not that i couldn't have held it down but yo it's it's that's past crazy when somebody is that late. It's like they have no respect for the fans, as far as I'm concerned, when they do stuff like that. They, it's all about them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, eventually people stop coming to their damn shows. That's just what it is. Yeah. So we're going to fast forward a little bit. So Nelly jumps. Oh, no, no, no. I want to even go back a little bit further. We, um, what did song do you remember that first hit in St. Louis that was a St. Louis joint where – we, we we talked off air a little bit about Domino coming out with Ghetto Jam and all that being from the Cochrane. You have got to let Domino go. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> you just got to let yeah. it go. Not until it comes on the show. Get them all. Here, get them all. Eventually. Um, what was the first song? I mean, I, I have a feeling, but I want to use what was the first song you like? Yo, this St. Louis is trying to get a hip hop scene. We're starting Man. to really get music out there. Man, what what's crazy about? The St. Louis music scene is we've been there since the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Rapper's Delight was played on WESL. Yep. It was yep. never played in New York. So this is 1979. St. Louis been supporting hip hop forever. St. Louis had a hip hop scene before. And some people take offense, but if you know your hip hop history, Silk Smooth the what first the, national recording contract. It wasn't like oh, <laughs> uh, a shout out to bitch with a good rap. If he bitch goes and brings clientele to the damn thing. Hey, I, and clientele's my joint too. I right, love clientele. People, but yeah, most people don't know that. They didn't know that before Nelly, it wasn't like they just think no. it's like, this it. There it's it is. Smooth. Bitch with a good it. rap. Him and Aunt Bank. I should not have been singing trick with a good rap as a child. <laughs> However, I did. And I I would love the video because it doesn't get any more St. Louis than that 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 be there skull cap. This the be there skull cap is what forget a, a Cardinals hat you get that anywhere. To have that be there skull cap that is St. Louis public schools period. That like y'all county folks had the dare program. Yeah, be there. I don't know nothing about that. I was told, look, they ain't tell me to stop doing drugs in St. Louis public school system. They told me to just bring my ass to school. That's it. You had that be there scully cap. That is, I only know one person right now who still has their uh their hat. Yeah. This was 1991. Let's be clear. For as a national mm -hmm. level, this came out in 92. This was JCD and the Dog Crown. Do you mm. remember? The Dog Crown before the Dog Crown. 
Mm -hmm. This is 92. So Jody is from the projects. Most all these people from down the way, Peabody, Doors, Webby. These are my people from down the way. So when you want to talk hip hop history, it didn't start in 2000. Most people getting it twisted because they don't know the history. Let's not forget about G Wiz with Wizard Child Records. You had Early D, Culture Shot, D Rebel on the roll again. Like we had a huge music scene brewing in the late 90s. It was happening. Mm -hmm. It was happening all the way through. But you got to look at the landscape of music at the time. It was strictly about New York and LA. Yep. Right. Strictly about New York and LA. They really weren't giving nobody from the Midwest a shot which that end up turning around to be the curse yep. because other cities start developing their own sound, supporting their own. Atlanta. <laughs> Houston, <laughs> Atlanta. I mean. Houston. You got yeah. rap a lot killing it in the South. You had UGK. So all these people start brewing up in Midwest and down South, creating their own sound to where they wasn't supporting New York and LA. So now when you go to New York, only thing you hear mainly is down south music, Midwest mm -hmm. and down south music. The music scene changed. You know, of course, it's still some New York artists that's getting that um, that's getting that love. You know, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying. I know as a DJ, the labels was focused on the West Coast and the East Coast. That's all mm -hmm. it was. You know, in their eyes. You know what I'm saying? So, shout to Air Love and Dr. Dre with your MTV raps who did give other people a play on that platform, you know, so definitely shout out to them. So uh, did they play a uh, trick with a good rap on um, uh, your MTV raps? No. Nah, no. <laughs> I know no, it was on the box. No, like, I don't they think they got on there. <laughs> they, never, they, they, they never played it because the labels, especially at that time, they pushed in the West Coast and the East Coast. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure the Ghetto Boys, uh, definitely got on you on the TV rap. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure of that one. Yeah. yeah. So in the 2000, early 2000, I remember I went to a party. I remember you DJ at Chaos. Remember Chaos? Yeah. <laughs> Chaos open for like three days. Nope. No, it was open like a summer. It was open a summer. Oh, like, oh Washington. Washington. It was yeah, across from Taboo. I yeah. want to say I went to chaos and it, it might have been must have been opening night, like maybe like it just it's like 2000, like, 2001. <laughs> Uh, that's exactly when the hell it was and i think i remember like i think i went back home or, or something whatever it was that i did but i just know it wasn't open anymore it was just done like i think i went back to school and when i came back i was like y'all like that club we went to okay oh, and, and chaos know. is basically where um isn't that where basically uh what is it, uh the spot on the, it, it's, it's it was in between so right here was indigo room uh at the end Chaos was in the middle, so all those little shops right that's in Washington, it's yeah. there in the middle. That's where it was. It had all them because it was a humongous, like warehouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had like three or four oh, floors. Yeah. It was ridiculously big. Your memory is crazy. <laughs> I, like, and I remember when Nelly. So I, 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 I will take onus on. I introduced the Northern Midwest. I went to school at Iowa State University. I was I, I was I was a, the slow jam DJ on Wednesday nights. I would it was called the Quiet Storm. I just bit it off of uh, Doc Winter in St. Louis. That's all I did. Everybody is the Quiet Storm if it's after two yeah. o'clock. Shout just out to uh, Kathy Hughes, <laughs> created it. You know, who right. created. And then I had a thunderstorm. I do on Saturday sometimes. It was like the little my little I can do a uh, little more upbeat stuff. And I got Nelly's uh, thing. They they would send us all the music. So. They said hot shit. It wasn't called country grammar. It was just hot shit. Right. And I was like, oh, this is a dude from the crib people have been talking about. I'm going to play it. I played it. People were like, oh, you only playing this because he's from St. Louis. He talking about where you from off the coast of uh, Math and Euclid and all that. I was like, it's going to blow up. I remember I went back. That it was a spring break. We went to chaos. Cut was spinning. They played it 10 times in a row. <laughs> And Cut couldn't stop. He was trying to mix other stuff in. People was like, no, run it back. That, that, that's back in the day. You could actually tell the DJ to run it back. Like, no, 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 no. Run that back one more again. Yeah. Oh, your memory is <laughs> crazy. It was a chaos. Yeah. Yeah. It was on the It was right a summer side. 2000 at chaos. Yeah. Yeah. 
grand opening, grand closing. Yeah, it was on one summer. <laughs> I'm telling you, I specifically remember going and yeah, we went. Yeah, I went because that uh, fall of 2000 or like August 2000, I went away to Southeast Missouri State. But it was 18 and up to get in chaos. That was the thing. That was it. So I'm saying, so I was able to go, but then like I said, so August comes, go to Southeast Missouri State, come back for a weekend, ain't no chaos. So <laughs> Like, y'all ain't make it to Labor Day, did you? Shit. No, just that summer. <laughs> it was just the summer. I'm like, man, I just came home, was ready, brought my little outfit and everything. Nah, we ain't going there. Okay, well. um, Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. So, so when you go to New York, what made the move to New York for you? All right. So the move, uh, the move to New York was a, like a, a combination of things. So, like I said, being able to go on tour with Cedric the Entertainer, and so here's another fact that some people know or might not know. So when Nelly got signed in 2000, they wanted me to go on that tour, on the Country Grandma promo tour. I didn't go because at the time I had Kirby's popping over on Linda. Oh, Kirby's. Kirby's <laughs> popping. I wouldn't listen. <laughs> this is at... DJ Cut killing the club scene. You know what I'm saying? At this point, I'm 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 the one that's renting out clubs yeah. and with my people and you know on the business end. I wasn't finna lose my money. Right. But what ended up happening, I got the call from uh Eric uh Eric Rohn and KB, whoever made the call to me to go on tour with Cedric the Entertainer in 2000. So we would just go Friday, Saturday come back on Sunday. So I went on that tour. Because you had Kirby's on Thursdays, right? Huh? You had Kirby's on Thursdays, right? Uh, I had I had it on Saturdays, but that was a more attractive tour. Plus, I was okay. getting paid. When you go on promo tours, they pay you per diem. So like $35 a day. So there's no way I was leaving for that. Yes. I'm making money. At, right. It, it, it just wasn't adding up. You know, no disrespect, nobody. I was like, I told him, I was like, nah, I, I can't do that one. I'm, you know, making the killing at the crib. But on that one, it made more sense. Then I had everybody in place, you know, Sir Thurl, Master D, Fred D. You know, I had enough DJs. <laughs> to, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I had enough people so they can hold it down. And all the business was still handled. So I went on that tour with them. Then once I went on tour with Nelly and the Ticks in 2001 on the MTV TRL tour, at that point, I already accomplished everything I could in St. Louis, and it was time to go. But I never quit radio. I never quit radio. When I went on tour, I took a leave of absence. Mm -hmm. Never. So at the time, Clear Channel owned um, stations in New York, and they launched Power 105. And Doc Winter, you know, at that time, he's the VP of Urban Programming, and asked me, like, yo, if you had the opportunity to leave St. Louis and work in the top five market, would you go? I'm like, hell yeah. Tall Boy is one of the first people, Tall Boy, the producer. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's one of the first people that, that told me, he's like, man, you're not going to be here long. He like, cut, you're going to leave St. Louis. This before the job off or anything, but because of the way I was growing and basically killing shit. So he was like, yo, you ain't going to be here. And the job offer came, I took it, and nobody believed I was leaving because I had to make the announcement on this date that happened, and I had nothing to do with it. The date I made the announcement was on April Fool's Day. Mm. Oh. Like, I know y'all think I'm joking, but this is real. Nobody believed it. I won't I be to, here tomorrow. Yeah, this is I had it. to give it uh, two weeks. Uh, right. Two weeks. Yeah, so it fell on April. I never forget it because it fell on April Fool's Day when I made the announcement. So nobody believed I was leaving. I was like, I know today is April Fool's Day, but I'm leaving. And two weeks later, I was gone. <laughs> yeah. So was you know, how was your experience being in New York and being a St. Louis cat? I know when I was out there in New York, it was always, it always felt like it was just different because we different kind of people. You know, being on the subway, you like, I'm saying, it's, it's when I first got, I'm saying, excuse me to everybody that's bumping into me while I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> right there being polite. 
No, I'm like, yo, excuse me, man, my man, my, excuse me, excuse me. And people, I mean, these people, million dollar people with briefcases going, going down to Wall Street, they, don't, they just rolling. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm bad, bro. I'm, excuse me. And I'm, I, I, two weeks, I'm like, I'm, I'm losing my voice from just saying, excuse me. Because I'm just used to, you know, because if the crib, if you don't say, excuse me, it could be on. It could be on. It's a whole problem. No. Excuse you. No. Like, it's going to no. be a whole. Get on a Metro link like that. And, and, and just be bumping people. Bumping somebody. To, was you driving when you was there too? No, I was only on the train. I was, I was, I was only on the train. Boy, yeah, you had to get aggressive driving. Yes, fast. All that aggressive, tough. Yeah, you had to get aggressive. Ain't no merge and wait till they let you go. You better jump over. Yeah. So yeah, and that's. I'm glad you brought that up. For as the way you drive, and for as the way you walk in New York, it's nothing intentional to do nothing to you. It's just I'm going where I'm going, and that's where I'm going. That's what it is, and that's the same type of mentality in the business. You know, doing radio and being able to, like, for one, come on, man, I'm working with legends, Ed Lover and Dr. Dre. <laughs> Ed Lover, like, damn legends and. Pete Rock and Marley Mall and Tony Touch and did I say Red Alert? I did say Red Alert. Yeah, 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 Red Alert, man. Red Alert and Spin Bad. Rest in peace, Spin Bad. Rest in peace, Carl Blaze. My girl, Deja Vu. Uh, Big Tigger. Egypt. Free from 106 and Park. Roxy worked with us. Moni Love. Chub Brock. Just so many people that I had the honor to work with Clue. You know, one time I told Clue, we, I, was, I was like, man, sometimes I just trip off. I'm standing here with all y'all. He was like, man, you one of us. What you talking about? <laughs> 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 yeah, but it, it was just, you know, crazy being from where we from. And I'm here, you know, at the damn epic, ep epicenter of the media capital of the world. I'm here. You know, being able to be on 106 in Park and appearances on BET and MTV and VH1 and, you know, doing a uh, Good Morning America live in Times Square with Wyclef from Planet mm -hmm. Hollywood. And I was his DJ. I'm just, just all the different experiences that I, you know, had to, had the honor of doing, like, in New York. Like, damn, put out an album. You know, it was on sequence records and that's what's funny wangster was on my mixtape that was released commercially before the eight mile soundtrack wow yeah if you look it up dj cut sequence mixtapes volume one because of course i showed some love to the crib i got a chaos song chaos and chemo what well, a whole nine i put uh let me mm -hmm. holler at you on there yeah so yeah it was it was TI 24s was on there. Yeah, so yeah, it's a lot of things I had a chance to do while I was there. I was like, man, this is, uh, you know, some projects I did with labels, it was released, some wasn't released, they still got the check. So yeah, it was it's a lot of moving yeah, parts. You know, me and G Wiz was doing a lot behind the scenes because with him being the originator of the video mix and then me having the connections in New York, we was moving around them offices getting checks. We was, <laughs> it's a lot of money in New York to get, man. So no, yeah, it is. It, it definitely an honor. And just, you know, being able to, like, you know, everybody's not gonna be a long time friend, but I create a lot of great relationships mm -hmm. with people in the city that I still keep in contact with, you know, like you got DJ whatever, who's a younger, DJ on the street team back then because they used to have to carry my crates to the party and I'm carrying like 10 crates <laughs> and build cases and they had to carry them you know what I'm saying but to see him killing the game with his own clothing line whatever it takes and just like damn this he used to be carrying my crates but he's <laughs> doing this thing he's doing this thing so yeah man a lot of good relationships and um when uh coming back to St. Louis and ASAP Ferg and TJ, you know, with Jam Master J's son, mm -hmm. they came to the station. They was on the hot side, but they just happened to be in the hallway and came around like, yo, what's up, OG? You know what I'm saying? Just like, <laughs> yo, 
Like, but what y'all doing? Here? <laughs> right. No, but what I'm saying is, for them to show me love, realizing like, yo, the ASAP mob when they was coming up on the mixtape game, I'm on Power 105. So you gotta look at people there actually grew up on my mixes, never even realizing that. Like, damn, two generations, you know, being on power for eight years, you know, that's somebody going through elementary school, high school, college, right. whatever. You had a chance to grow up listening to me. So I'm like, that's crazy. For them to come through and show me love like that, I was like, that's wild. Just watching their movement. Cause you know, some people catch amnesia. You know what I'm saying? But to see where they is, where they are to this day, and you know, just a few people that came to St. Louis when I went back, that was from up top, you know, show me number look. Stacy, y'all you y'all know you're writing some stuff down. Go ahead. I don't remember what I wrote down. I start like, so I'm a doodler, or you can say one word and I'll write that word down. And mm -hmm. then so I actually wrote down Tarboy because I started laughing because I used to serve him at Denny's. <laughs> And so I wrote that down because like um, Denny's out on 270 and is that how to show right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that one, and I was working there making nothing an hour and um, he used to always come. He had this like kind of maroon Denali and like, but I never got to serve him. I was always being at the, I was a hostess and one day he comes in and he, I, I had to actually go serve him. And when I tell you, like, it was the day before I was supposed to go get my hair done. So I'm just like, man, like, I'm, I, I didn't think, let me say this. I didn't think he was going to try to talk to me or holler at me, anything like that. But I at least could have gave a man something to look at because I had, <laughs> like, I just, my hair was just slick down because I was, I had short, wasn't ready yet. I'm like, I got to go serve this man these pancakes. But that's my tar boy story. But anywho, um, what was I going to ask you? Oh, so in regards to... We were did talking he, about some of the nice younger. Did he huh? tip you nicely? Did he give you a nice tip? I okay. don't even remember. I think I was just so traumatized by the fact that I was looking like one of the things lost in the fire and I had to serve this man his pancakes. So just, I was too focused on that. I probably even got his order wrong. I was like, man, like, like, but like, I was, let me say this. What's funny is I was more in love with the Denali than I was with him because he's not, <laughs> not that tall. And I'm like five nine, so it was like I'm looking at the Denali, like man, that is a nice truck. You <laughs> riding that truck, that's me. Um, but so I was gonna ask, um, when it comes to some, we were talking about some of the the younger DJs, and everybody right now is a DJ, and uh, you know celebrity DJs and all that stuff. You think you can make a playlist, and that and now you're a DJ for the some of the younger kids that are out there who want to get into this profession? Like, what would you, what would be your advice? Like, what is your, that industry, OG, this is what you need to know going in? Man, I'm still, and what's crazy, you know, you know like, if you look at my hoodie, it's, you know, say DJ Cut University. Mm -hmm. So what I, what I plan to do is start working with some of the younger kids. I'm going to teach them how to DJ from vinyl because there is a movement of younger DJs. Look them up on Instagram. You got um, the two twin girls. I'll be messing their names up, but they oh, the uh, little light skin with they got the nice curly hair and everything. Yeah, now, they hair straight, but they they <clears throat> them girls killing it. You yeah. got DJ Sophia Rocks. You got DJ Prince. You, you know, you have a whole lot of young DJs that's still on turntables. That's dope. So, you know, I don't want the art form to go away to, to where they just think they can just push a button. I don't not do however you do, but, like, I could even show you a clip of my son at the age of four on turntables, records. I don't know if I could interject that here. Yeah, go ahead. Turn my screen. Hold on. Let me get to it. Because this is... You know, I keep all that type of stuff. Uh, he's four. And I had him on turntables. Like, music been his thing, too. Like, you know, obviously, you know, me. But the age of four, every time I show anybody this damn video, they'd be like, no way. He's four. 
hand movement knows like he I, I kept showing him okay this is the right turntable this is what this does right left right left and uh he caught on and where is it at? where is it at? here it is right here i'm gonna share my screen oh you gotta uh yeah, yeah let me give you let me give you uh availability to do it. Hey, uh, please give this man uh, his access. Yeah, yeah. Screen sharing. Thank you. So I'm going to show you him. This is him at the age of four on turntables. Records. Yep, you can no, share it. No Serato. Records. Records. Let me see. This is, uh, here we go. Um, oh, I'm sure. so you being around DJs, knowing DJs, yeah, you watch the hand movement, and this is him at the age of four. So it's like teaching them the actual art form of DJ. Cause that was at the age of four. And he's he's into music, like we just trip off him. Um we he's taking piano lessons. He can listen to a song like and play it on the xylophone. Like me and my wife just be tripping off like we got some kind of musical little genius happening and we're not gonna get in his way. <laughs> right. All this tools that he bought and yeah, just support it. Yeah, so, you know, just still showing the kids the foundation of everything. Anybody can push the damn button. You know, it is what it is, do what you do, whatever. But, you know, it, it, it's like people, believe in keeping the culture alive you know technology always going to be there i use serato yes i do but i still use turntables i use turntables with my serato i'm not you know yeah i want to give a shout out to the song that's playing because um, <laughs> there's like there's the uh, little meme that's going out like i fell in love with hip-hop when i first heard and for me i think it is it takes two by rob bass um, it just reminds me of my sister, my oldest sister, being in the car with her. She had like this old uh, black Ford Escort or something. Like it was a little small car, a little you know, you know, first car situation. And I just remember being in her car one day and that tape playing, and I was like, "What is this? Like, right. what is this song?" Because like she is eleven years older than I am, so it was like, "What? What? What is this?" Because I couldn't listen to that at my house. Like, what is this like I'm, I'm used to listening to I can listen to like DeBarge. I remember I told you my grandma bought me a Bunny DeBarge uh, tape. Yes. So I had that's the stuff that I had. So you're the only house. person right. that had a Bunny DeBarge album. No, yeah, you the but only you, one that had that because I don't think that's, I, I, look, I, I don't even uh, cut. I, I cut. You've been in music a long time. You met a lot of people. Have you met anyone that had the Bunny DeBarge album? Nobody. Nobody. I was like. I'm Yo, I, special. Thank you. Um, yeah, so my grandma would go to Ventures and like little tape decks. And, like, uh, like, <laughs> she would go to Ventures and so she would go through the, uh, the the music section and she would pick up things that she would think they're like, oh, this would be good for her. This would be good for her. So it was never, so either I had, if it was a rap album, definitely with no cussing on it, or it was this the most random stuff so that, that I would get. Um, and one of the tapes that I had was Bunny the Barge. And can you I name me one single off of there at least? Like, I mean, I don't even know what, what, 
But the bars can write. She's a great writer, but name me something off her album that's like a if okay, so here's the thing. I actually need to look it up because either I'm making up this song or it really is on there. Um, but if it's a song that I, I think it is on there. So cut while she's looking at up you, our last topic of the night. Hold on, I think she might be looking up Share My World, which was on Elder Boy's album. Mm-mm. Which was a duet. No, okay. it's going to be some random song cut you don't even know. It's going to be like, Baby Be Mine in the Dark. <laughs> it's going to be like, and it, it charted at 101 on the top 100. So it charted 101 on the top 100. But <laughs> I need to borrow this album, In Love, came out in 1987, first okay. off. Two... Um, but what single is off it? What's the single? Give me the single. There isn't one. The point okay, is, okay, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> what is the song? I'm like, supposed to know. <laughs> like, but I'm saying, like the song. I need to. I'm, I'm about to actually try to find this album and listen to it because, like, so there's a song in my head, and it's like either it really is a song. It or I totally I bet it's it. Billy Lawrence from St. Louis that's something. It, it is not Billy saying. Lawrence. I know Billy Lawrence. I know Happiness. Damn it. Okay, Happiness is what I feel when you when I'm around you. Okay, listen, but. <laughs> It is, um, I don't, I have to, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to find my Bunny the Bar song, and I'm going to play it for you, and you're going to feel, and I'm going to sing along with it, and you're going to feel As soon as you find, I don't care what time of night, put it in the <laughs> I will wake up and go listen to that one. I, I can understand how that's special for you, because you was young, and your grandmother bought you a tape. And you she bought me, it. uh, it's every tape, everything that I own, until I can start buying my own stuff, she bought everything. Except, and then the, I think one of she stopped. Because one time she bought me South Central Cartel. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. From Venture though, so it's the it's the edited version of South Central Cartel. Yeah. No. Oh. No, actually, no. I take it back. No, it wasn't. No, it was it not. Was. And I'm gonna tell you. He said no. It's not. I said no. no, it wasn't. It was not. It was not the edited version of South Central Cartel because when I got it and I came home and I put it in my little uh, in my little Sony. Uh, thing or whatever, right? So I put it, put it in my little boom box and I start press play and the words that came out of those men's mouth, the original <laughs> Havoc, the original Havoc and Prodigy. Right. I it out right. and yeah. I put it back into the case and I took it to my grandma immediately because I, I wasn't going to get in trouble for listening to it. And I was like, I don't think I'm supposed to have this tape. And she's like, what's wrong with it? I'm like, they cussing. And she's like, what on this? Yup, they cussing. And this is like before, because I think the parental advisory things weren't on there yet. It started mm-hmm. with like NWA. Once NWA right. did what they did, and ADA was straight out of Compton, they started. <laughs> right. The so, oh, it was, a, it was a label on that South Central Cartel. Oh, no, 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 like, because that's that serving them heat. I'm assuming it's a serving uh, them heat. I don't that's, know what it was, clown. but that's, I know. You get, you get clown. Okay. On that I, what I know is that there was cussing. And uh, Rosalie Chen wasn't finna come with my behind because I'm listening to cussing in my room. Okay, I mean my right. nope, nope, not not me. <laughs> You're not gonna get me. This is a setup. I know what it is. No, ma'am, not doing it. But, All right, cut. So Soul this Train my, Awards. So this is our Soul Train Awards. So pre ahead. So we had Kevin Johnson on last episode. He gonna say '84. The Soul Train Awards just start to '87. So we we didn't we didn't. We didn't give him a year to start. So he said, let's do 84. Like the Soul Train Wars start to 87. So we got to realign this. So he chose 1999. So you're the second person to do this. We just added this game to the show. So you have everything from 87 to 2020 to name for the for this for this this was part of the game. Wow. I want to see what happened at 89. 89. Woo! All right. I want to see what happened in 89. All right. So the host for that one was uh, DI Work was the host for like seven years. I don't know if y'all knew that. Well, let's, yeah, we need to move up to 95 because you saying DI Work was the host. I'm pretty sure hip hop probably was not represented at the Soul Train. Uh, Yeah, it's DI Work and Patty LaBelle. They hosted for three years straight together. That is interesting. Well, so here's the thing with hip hop though, because like I said, with one we just did with, with Kevin, like th- there's a lot of overlap in those in some categories. So things that you'd be like, why would this hip hop album be in there? They throw it in there. Like I okay, think they all didn't, right. so let's, there's, let's, a, there's the best rap album on here. There's the best oh, rap album on here. Let's go. And that's probably that's all that's probably that's the only category for rap. 
I know it. I know it. I know <laughs> is it. it hammer? Don't hurt him. Because no, 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 no. Oh, it's even better than that. We're gonna get into it. So, best R&B urban contemporary album of the year, male. Bobby McFerrin, Simple Pleasures. Mm. I'll be sure in effect mode. Bobby Brown, Don't Be Cruel. Luther Vandross, Any Love. And Bobby Brown Bobby didn't take it. Cruel. Bobby, they didn't give it to Bobby Brown. No, no, you got to guess. Know, we don't know. I'm giving you all the me. nominees. We're about to find out. guess which think? one it is. Who do you think it's got to be Bobby Brown. Who was hotter than Bobby Brown in 89? It, Luther wasn't hotter than any love now. Nah. No, Bobby Brown, Bobby. the king. Yeah. The king. Bobby Brown, don't be cruel. The king yeah. of R&B. Yeah, you, you right. can't deny that one. That was like, no. Nah. All right, so this one's best female. This one, this is a strong one. Best R&B urban contemporary album, female. Vanessa Williams, The Right Stuff. Sade, Stronger Than Pride. Anika, Nita Baker, giving you the best that I got. Tracy Chapman, self-titled album. Mm. Anita. Anita. Yeah, can to say Anita. <laughs> yes, yeah, Anita. I, I thought yeah, y'all man. might have slipped up on the Sade was stronger than Pride. Nah, mm. that album, man. It was all right. It won. Our best won. group band or duo. Guy, the self titled Guy album. New edition, Heartbreak. Levert, just cooling. Tony, 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 who? New edition. Scatter mm. me. You mm. yeah, we got Stacey. Wait, you said it's New Edition. Guy, the subtitle Guy album, Levert, Just Cool in the first Levert album, and then Who from Tony, the first Tony Tony album. What's, yeah. on, the heart, what's, what's on the Heartbreak album? Mm. Everything. So that that's everything you like? Ooh. Is that, oh, is that Rain? Okay. Yeah. yeah. That right. album was, man, that's that's right. the tour. That's the Any Heartbreak tour. That's, so oh. that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of, like, so him just saying heartbreak, I'm like, any heartbreak or is it a simple yeah, it's heartbreak? any heartbreak. Yeah, any heartbreak. Got it. All right. I'm there with you. So you, okay. I'm yep. be, this new I'm edition feeling heartbreak. a little weird and I want to say guy. No, it's any heartbreak. Any Ooh. heartbreak. It was dope to us, but <laughs> masses, hands down, new edition, any heartbreak. Man. But I will say the thugs rolled around to that guy in Jeeps. I know. No, well, I'm talking like straight drug dealers was right around that guy. <laughs> oh, that, that was crazy. Man, too. Yeah. Peace of my love and goodbye, love. Ooh, man. Yeah. All right. Best R&B urban contemporary single. Bobby Brown, My Prerogative. Michael Jackson, Man in the Mirror. Johnny Kemp, Just Got Paid. Keith Sweat, Make It Last Forever. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> You're wrong right here. You that, that's hard because that goes. I want to tell you that it's Bobby, but fuck around might have been Keith Sweat. Um, I, don't th- I didn't, I'm sure it didn't go to Mike. I don't think it went to Mike. Mm-hmm. It would be disrespectful if Michael Jackson did not get that award. That's Michael Jackson, like man in the mirror. That's disrespectful if Michael Jackson didn't get that award. That is disrespectful. I'm I'm going with Mike. My my gut tells me it's Bobby, but I'm a, I'm gonna go with Mike. I'm gonna go with Mike. I'm All saying. right, Stacy. I'm going with Bobby. It is Mike. This was the time period of y'all. Remember, he was still. They was trying to get him to come back to the Soul Train Awards to come. He didn't show up for this award. I remember this. So they were still trying so, to get him to come back. <laughs> that's the thing. So that's why I thought it wouldn't be Mike, because I'm like, Mike won't even fuck with them no more. No, they were still giving him awards. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe if we give him another one, maybe he'll show up this time. All right. So this was for the same category, but female. Whitney Houston, Where Do Broken Hearts Go? Karen White, Superwoman. Anita Baker, giving you the best that I got. Vanessa Williams, the right stuff. Anita. Anita Baker. Yeah. So train one mess with Whitney. Right. Okay. So I'm already, if y'all remember, this is when she got this one she met Bobby at this award show. Mm-hmm. This she got booed. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, okay, y'all can already do the process of elimination. She ain't winning. Right. right. So that's I'm going. I'm going with Anita. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. who you going with cut? Anita. Yeah, out the gate. Anita. Yep, it's Anita. Yep. Anita, yeah, give me the best right I got. <laughs> You're damn right it's Anita. All right. Best R&B single, group band, or duo. Guy Groove Me, Rob Bass and DZ, DJ Easy Rock, It Takes Two, EU The Butt, New Edition, Can You Stand the Ring? Damn. 
Hey, I need to what? That's why this is so fun, man. This is why this is so pull fun. Up to 89, uh, I, I, where's the, I need to see video of this. I need to see the uh, the eighty nine. Oh no, you did. Yeah, that was online. It's on YouTube. I let me write that down. So I need to. Uh, no. So I YouTube. need to watch this. It, it's definitely it's not grooving me. It's not grooving me. Even though that was my song. Yeah, but you're but, saying you can see the mass is not feeling there, right, Cut? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Groove me was like, what the hell? Wait a minute, this hip hop. This arm be oh, this they didn't know what it was yet. They, they, that was they, like that, that was just dope too much when confusion. It came out. But um man, this is hard because it's it's a 50, it's a coin toss between it takes two and the butt because they weren't really rapping hip hop. So I'm gonna go with the butt. What was bigger than the butt? What was bigger? Yeah, than Meryl Streep when I was, uh, Glenn Close was doing the butt a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> on the yeah. All right, Stacey, what you got? So it's it takes two to butt grew me. And can you stand the rain? New edition. And can you stand the fucking rain? I think it's new edition. It's EU the butt man. Hey, cut yeah. cut is a hundred percent on knees right now. Like. <laughs> What was bigger than the butt? Wasn't that big? Hey, we got we got to bring Cutback versus Kevin Johnson on a random year. Oh, that'll be funny. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's too. That'll be funny. Yeah. All right, next up, best urban contemporary music video. All right, mm. DJ Jazzy Prince, Jazzy, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Prince and the Stand, Man in the Mirror, Michael Jackson, Kumo D, Wild Wild West, Stevie Wonder, Skeletons. I don't even know like what the skeletons video is. We're gonna go ahead and give it to you. Mike. Remember the skeletons in? You remember it was like it was showing all these different people going through all these different problems, and like mm -hmm. it was a guy that was like cross-dressing, it was like a, a, a girl going through some stuff with like a guy. It was it was a pretty good video. Skeletons was. I don't know. I got I it is not in my memory right now. Well, you got cut cut. You are hundred percent. I ain't trying to put the pressure on you. Mike, it's Mike. Cause the man in the mirror. That about... video used to scare the hell out of me. The man, the man in the mirror video. Like, cause it was just so much. It's a, that's a trauma video. Like for a young kid to see, like everything, like they got all the little kids in Africa with flies and people that starved and everything. Like I was eight years old, sir. I'm trying <laughs> to just watch some stuff on TV, and this was like Baby Jessica had already ruined my life with uh, with her trauma. I don't need. The man in the mirror, but I think that's who won. All right, yep, it's Michael Jackson, man in the mirror. All right, now this one, this one's a tricky. This is this is the the, the, the very tricky one. Okay. Before the hip hop, this before the this before rap. So this is best new artist. I'll be sure. Guy, Karen White and BB and CC Winans. I'll be sure. I'll be sure. I'll give it to Al. It's I'll be sure. I, I, I thought a little bit more trickier. I thought I thought the uh, BB and CC and Karen White might slip y'all up. Or the nah, that's that's I'll be sure. That because that was his time to shine. That's when his light skin and this came into play. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Now here we at rap. <laughs> the only category rap for this night. Let this me stop rap. you, Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince. <laughs> Damn, that's he. <laughs> we didn't go through the other other. He got it. That was stop. Ain't even get, he ain't even. I ain't even get to the, the nominees. That's exactly. I don't know who, I, who was the nominees. Who was out there? Who was available? Okay, so but this is a first. This is a first, even though it's the second one that someone has named the artist. Is Rob Bass and DJs. Rob takes two. Public Enemy. It takes a nation of millions. Uh, salt and pepper. Assault with a deadly pepper. Mm, yeah, salt, that would have been. Salt, yeah, assault with a deadly. It was assault with a deadly. You said pepper? Yeah, yeah assault, salt pepper. With, assault with a deadly pepper. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. I thought, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, I knew Jazzy Jeff Fresh Prince, even though it should have been public enemy. Like it takes a nation. Oh, right. God, that album. Whew. And honestly, this is like this is like if I'm looking at this track list, and this is one of the worst um salt and pepper albums. Yeah, it was. And that's the first one, right? No, uh -huh. no, no. This is guys, it's uh it's shake your oh. thing on her. That's the only big single off of her. No. Then he really twist the shout. Is, is Ricky Smiley in the Shake Your Thing video? Sh stop it. Watch the video. Stop it. It's a don't, dude. Look, don't start another bit that me and my boy didn't have for 20 years by DJ Cut being in uh 
Uh, uh, <laughs> cool, cool guy Watch the video. There's a guy, skinny guy is dancing, and he's like this. And that looks like Ricky Smiley. Okay. All right, cut. This is the last one. You can do 100%. If you get this, you will be back for the bonus round <laughs> at some point. Right. A guess is one of our other uh, great guests. Best jazz album. Wow. Okay. Shy Day, Stronger Than Pride. Kenny G's uh, Silhouette. Bobby McFerrin's Simple Pleasures. Najee, Day by Day. This is the Kenny last category. Kenny Silhouette is an amazing album. Ooh. I just want to put that out there. And I want to give it to you, you are, you, are up, you are up with greatness right now. You are uh, have an opportunity to go for, <laughs> 10 for 10. I don't care who else is on it. I'm giving it to Kenny G because it's Kenny G. I want to give it to Kenny G, but I feel they gave it to Bobby McFerrin. Possibly. Like, All right. Songbird is on Silhouette. It's a good album. Damn. All right. Y'all, it's final answer for everybody. Hold on, hold on. I just feel it should have went to Kenny G, but they gave it to Bobby McFerrin. That's just what I feel. That's what it went to Kenny G. It was Kenny G. <laughs> Songbird is on silhouette. My, my, my Songbird is, had, and black people love Songbird. <laughs> that's, this is what I'm saying. My grandpa had that tape. We used to play it in the car. If a time. white man's that's won the jazz category at the Soul Trade Music Awards, it would be for Songbird. Listen, <laughs> Kenny G and his alto saxophone is out here living life. So this is, this is what we do. Now, Kenny G was dope. I just feel like they gave it to Bobby McFerrin. Because they didn't want to give it to Kenny G. Well, you got to remember, Bobby McFerrin was getting all the Grammys. So he was the destined Grammys. not to get all the Soul Train Awards. Because <laughs> everybody right. was kind of like, oh, he's kind of corny. You know. Yeah. Yep. Yep, that's what it was. That's because yeah, was he was dominating three categories up here. Yeah, he was killing it. Yeah, because I I'm I'm tripping. I'm up here thinking Grammys because I remember him winning, killing it at the Grammys. But Soul Train Award, okay, he didn't. Get that's that. why we put the spin on it. We didn't do the Grammys. We did the Soul Train Awards. The black. Now, that was good because I just keep seeing him win, but he not won like four Grammys that year. Yeah, he killed it. He killed it. Soul Train was like, nah, nigga, you can't. Yeah. Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy. <laughs> Cut, man. We appreciate you so much for coming on. This was super, super dope. We got to get you and Kevin on a battle royale of the Soul Train Awards. We just going to pick a random year. Y'all don't get to pick it. That's cool. That's and cool. you and Kevin Johnson go heads up on music. Who who, who can get the most right yeah, for the Soul Train yeah, Awards? Yeah, no, nah, that'll be a good one. That'll be a good one. He can't pick 84 because I was like, 84 don't exist. It never happened. It's still the 87. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm cool with it. Let's get it. Cut, uh, let everybody know what you got going on now, where they can get you up at, what, you, what they can get in touch with, or whatever you got, what do you have going on now with the life insurance and things like that? All right, man, my whole thing, um, um, like, if you listen to me when I was on 95, um, a lot of people knew what I stood for. I stood for my people. I stood for the community. And when certain deaths happen in the city, I used to let people come up to do GoFundMe. It wasn't everybody. It was not going to be everybody because it would be a long ass line every week. Are you saying our city is hood though, cut? But there would be a long that's line. That's across the country. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's across the country. Yeah. So a seed was planted from that. And then when the opportunity came across my plate, to get into the life insurance business in 2016, I didn't even hesitate. I was like, I'm in. It just makes sense because I wanted to get knowledgeable about the business. Cause I remember when my grandmother died in 09, they'd been paying on these policies forever. And one was no good. And the other two only totaled up to about $1,500. Like, you know what I'm saying? So these are things in our community that nobody ever taught us. We didn't know nothing about this. And then we always heard the phrase, just get enough to get yourself buried. So I wanted to learn about it. You know, when got my license and studying for my license and going through the class, you learning so much like, yo, the fastest way to generational wealth is life insurance because it's tax free. It's tax free. So we all are gonna die anyway. So you might as well leave your family quarter million, half a million, a mil, 
you know what I'm saying? But that that ain't what we do in our community. We leave nothing. You know what I'm saying? People gonna fight over the TV, the Gucci purse, and stuff like that. But educating our people to be like, look, let me see what you got, okay? And poke the holes in the policy. Like, nah, this is all wrong. This is what you need to have. So it's like, it's a huge business. Of course, I make money in the business, but at the same time, it's educating our people. Like, mm-hmm. you got to leave your family in better shape than you. Because generation, like, you, you got to look at Black wealth is on pace to be in zero in 2053. Already, already our income, the average income net worth of a Black person right now is 17000 the net worth of a black person in the U.S. is 17000 while our counterparts' net worth is about 171000 Do you see the pattern going on here? Yeah. So yeah. the fastest way to generational wealth is in life insurance. That's why I'm in this business. Now I'm also studying to get my investment license to start teaching our people to put some money aside to take care of you down the road. Because every new pair of Jordans or this drip, that drip, don't mean a damn thing when you get killed. Don't mean nothing. I don't care how many Louis bags you got, let somebody die. Take that to the pawn shop, see what you're going to get. Little to nothing. It's, it's nothing. Your your kids can't eat no damn Louis bag. Nothing. They, they can't eat that. So, yeah, so just teaching our people about generational wealth. That's all I'm on. That's I'm- all I'm glad you mentioned the $1,500 policies. I think there's a, I, I actually had this conversation with my mom. We were just talking about like older people who will have those policies. And you know that grandma's been paying on it all these years. However, when something happens and you go to call the insurance company, they're like, yes, yeah, $1,500. Wait, what? The, but the thing is, when she took it out 50, 60 years ago, $1,500 was a lot of money. She was good with that. And now that's not going to work. I think, I want to say when my grandmother died, we did, buried her at uh, Calvary um, on West Florissant. It was 900 to dig up the, the ground. Mm-hmm. So we still had to come out and people don't, and I think, so that, that's the other part. Like sometimes you have to have that uncomfortable conversation with your elders and your family and be like, I mean, everyone in general, but definitely talk to grandma, talk to auntie, whoever, and find out what's that policy looking like? Because yeah, she didn't pay it on it, but it's not worth anything or it's not going to be enough to do basically anything. And then the other part of it is that we think that insurance costs too much. But, and, but, but we will have full coverage on a car and liability on our life. A whole mm-hmm. full coverage. Full coverage on your car, liability on your life. I like that. Like full coverage. <laughs> Um, okay. 2005 Cadillac XL <laughs> with 275,000 miles on it that they got at GMT Auto Sales. Full <laughs> Okay. You paying more on that car than it's worth. Like the, the, the amount that she's paying, your interest rate is 127%. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you come see me at GMT Auto Sales. All right, <laughs> save yourself five hundred dollars when you mention DJ Cut. So yeah, <laughs> I just kept my hands in multiple things. That's that's multiple sources of income. There's nothing wrong with it. You should, and then especially if you can have if you can have that uh, that knowledge, um, that financial education that we there's a gap that we don't have. Like we don't have that that we need that bridge between. Um, black people and financial education. I don't even want to just say financial literacy, just education, knowing what's out there. We don't no. know that things are there. You, you, you hit it. It is financial literacy. That's what, yeah, that, that's the goal because we got every matching, we drip to death. And <laughs> is it we drip to death? <laughs> empty pockets. I don't care who it is. The biggest, you know, street dude get knocked off. They ain't in up. Damn. Kids got 10, 12 kids all across the city. That that means nothing. Done. And down at Ronald L. Jones trying to make a deal. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Cut, thank you for coming through. How many times do you have to tell people to get off them cages at the Saints? 
<laughs> where you have to get on the mic and be like, hey, man, I know y'all up on the cages. I'll let y'all do what the hell y'all want to do. They told me to tell y'all to get down. I wouldn't give a <laughs> damn what y'all did. But uh, yeah, real simple. Follow me on my Instagram is real DJ K U T. And on Facebook is Brian Cutter. B R I A N Cutter K U T T E R. No, Cutter is not my last name. I just had to make it up. All right. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Once again, uh, shout out to Stacy. She done had an amazing last few weeks. She graduated college, became a Delta. She okay. so we gotta give her flowers though too, man. Before we get out of here, I'm so tired. Congratulations! You gotta <laughs> tell us the secret. You gotta tell us the secret. No, no I sleep. Here. I ain't been asleep since the '90s. Um, I am exhausted. So yeah, the last um, hell, I guess it's been seven weeks. So the last seven weeks, I switched jobs. I got um, I, I left one career, went to another one. Um, and actually within, in my field of study, graduated from University of Arizona last Tuesday. So flew out to Tucson, came back like last Wednesday to, and did that. And then on April 25th, the year of our Lord, uh, 2021. Is that I, the year of our Lord? I <laughs> the year of our Lord. Okay, I'm just going to try to know that, you know. Yeah, so um, April 25th, 2021, I became a member of the greatest sorority in the world, Delta Sigma okay. Theta sorority. Okay. Yeah. So it has been a, a crazy, like, like I, like I was joking about my background, but like there's every, like I still school stuff up here. Like it has been, I've been nonstop for months and I need to put, I got a syllabus sitting up here. I can get rid of it now, but it's just still sitting up here. Uh, shout out to uh, uh, Cut. Uh, I don't know if you know, we, we had uh, 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 E40 sent us cases of his uh, Earl Stevens I because of Stacey. Uh, <laughs> I, got, I have two. Yeah, me. Um, you, still got, you still got some of that left? I haven't had any of it. I haven't drank any of it. Oh, I drank all that Earl Stevens. I, I didn't drink it. any of it. So they, <laughs> we were talking about the freaking wine. It was after their versus battle. And I was laughing. I'm like, I said, he, I said, he mentioned mango scotto. So I talked about it on the podcast, right? And I was reading what was in it, like the, the, um, the, the description that was on the website. And like, I made like in the podcast, I'm like, I said, somebody please buy me this bottle. So he posted it on Twitter. E40 saw it and was like, we gonna get y'all together. Um, somebody reached out to me and got my address and sent me two cases of wine. So I got a case of mango scotto and I got a case of the red wine, red wine blend. And then I had somebody drive to St. Louis with uh, half a case of each to send up there to them. They got it. I still got my stuff down here because I don't drink. So it's like, it's just, it's just down here. And then somebody else just sent me some wine the other day and it's just here. I have plenty. If I ever decide to drink, then I'm good. Well, where you at? You said down. Where you I'm at? in Dallas. So originally from St. Louis, born and raised there. McKinley was actually my middle school. Oh, wow. So okay. I was there in in middle school. But um, yeah, I've been here. That wasn't about a high school, though. That wasn't about a high school. What, McKinley High School? Yeah. The, the, um, Russell? McKinley High School. That, so the middle, oh, duh, the middle school, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So they made it, they made it a mating school. Yeah. yeah, they made it, so it was McKinley High School, and then they changed it into um, a middle school, so it was McKinley CJA, and then now it's like McKinley, like I think it's the middle school and high school are there now, mm -hmm. but they're a magnet school now, so we came in 95, because we were at Enright CJA, and we moved over to McKinley in 95, and ta-da, but, um, but yeah, so I've been here at about, I think, what, July will be six years I've been in Dallas. Nice, nice. What's good cut? Whatever, and where they catch up at again? What the they, we can plug that for you. All right, again, real simple. Hit me up on Instagram. I'm mainly on Instagram, so it's real DJ Cut. It's real DJ K U T. I'm mainly on Instagram, and I post everything to Facebook. Yeah, but that's what I'm on, man. Into um, mainly life insurance. The investment side, I got my life insurance. I mean, my real estate license, top of 2020. Just uh, chilling, man. I live in Tampa. Are you in Tampa right now? Been in Tampa almost a year. Oh, snap. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Nice. No taxes. <laughs> state taxes. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no state. state. Yeah. 
Not federal. Oh, that would be beautiful. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Federal, that's what gets you. <laughs> you get right. you yeah, so, yeah, no state income tax. So. Yeah, that's that's Texas, too. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not. Although I pay New York taxes. That's a whole other story. <laughs> I'm about to say what? Okay. My my employer resides in New York. Oh. My Ooh. paycheck, my first paycheck uh, informed me that I also apparently live in New York because yeah. that's a... That work remote uh, coming back to haunt you. <laughs> Man, I, you knew this MacBook Pro was a call, was it was a cost for it. You knew something was wrong. When they sent the MacBook Pro, they sent this fancy iPad over here that I got. I got the new, like, this is, yeah, this is my phone for work, all of that. And then I got some New York state taxes. That's how they get you. Read the fine print, ladies and gentlemen. Read the fine print on them remote jobs. But, well, man, Cut, thank you so much. Like, for real, for real, this was super, super dope for you to come on with us, man. We got to get you on with Kevin Johnson for the uh, Ultimate Soul Train Awards. Like we said, a <laughs> battle royale. Um, you you got all, I mean, except for the last one, that was the Kenny G. You got all of them. Yeah. And I think I, Kevin had eight of eight of ten. Okay. But I, he, I, he picked 99. He went from 84 to 99. Damn. And you know, that's what it was like, like rap and RB. It was like RB contemporary, but it was like rap people in the RB because that's when it got real weird for the soul trainer where the sweet spot was around like 94, I think, where it was kind of like split and you could still kind of have it separated. I'm I'm with it. Let's do it. Cause yeah, he he knows his music too. So that this would be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, we appreciate the cut. We appreciate it definitely. All right, cool. All right, man. So yeah, anytime. Just hit me up. I'm with it. 